extend a warm welcome to all of you in joining this innovative online learning platform. I am Dr. Anu, a neurophysiotherapist and I am practicing in Chandigarh in ANH Physiotherapy Clinic. Today I am going to talk about stroke rehabilitation, neuroplasticity and neurolinguistic programming, the role of NLP in stroke rehabilitation. Stroke is a leading cause of disability and death in India. According to National Stroke Association, around 10% of people make it to complete recovery after stroke. Around 25% mild to moderate recovery and more than 40% of people have moderate to severe impairments post stroke. The role of physiotherapist in stroke rehabilitation starts from the very beginning. Once the patient is stabilized in the ICU and his vitals are stable, the role of physiotherapy begins right there. Before we start, I would like to give you an outline of today's lecture. We will cover three four topics. The first one will be stroke rehabilitation. What exactly are the impairments after stroke? What uh, would be the, you know, the time frame for recovery? What are the prognostic factors? And once the rehabilitation process starts, which therapies should be used in collaboration by the patient, therapist and the caregiver so that the recovery can be faster. We can minimize the time to recover and we can bring the patient back into the normal routine, into the productive life that he was in before the injury, before the stroke episode. So let's first begin with impairments of uh, stroke. Stroke impairments are majorly motor impairments, sensory impairments, cognitive impairments where the patient is you know, unable to determine the uh, orientation, place, person and maybe reasoning is also absent, abstract thinking is affected, these kind of functions. Then there could be visual, hearing and language impairments when the patient is unable to maybe see because of any optical uh, hemisphere or optical nerve involvement or there is any hearing impairment or there could be any language impairment there could be Broca's aphasia, Wernicke's aphasia or even global aphasia then there could be balance impairment because the patient's orientation is disturbed the uh, you know the balance pathways are affected in any way or the patient's coordination is impaired hemispatial neglect that is Neglect of one side of the hemisphere where the patient is not able to appreciate that side of the body because of which his posture disturbance happens and he is unable to do any activity on that particular side of the body because he is not maybe seeing on that side due to homonymous hemianopia or he is not able to appreciate the position of the body and the existence of the affected side of the body. Now let's talk about the recovery of uh, stroke patients. It was said uh, that initial six months play a very crucial role in recovery of the hemorrhagic patient. But now the notion is changing. We believe that owing to the neuroplasticity factor, recovery can happen in each and every patient of hemiplegia or stroke because the brain has the ability to restructure itself depending on the correct rehabilitation, intensity, frequency and the right approach which will decide the outcome, a better outcome. Let's talk about the recovery factors. What determines the recovery post stroke? What One of the major factors is age. If a patient's age is above 70 or 75 years, the chances of recovery are rather poor because the patient uh, you know, has the initial uh, scoring on functional index measure that is the FIM, activity of daily li uh, living score at the time of the admission also determines the prognosis of the patient. So you can definitely tell between two patients who is going to recover faster. If the FIM score is better, chances of recovery are also better. You can calculate the Barthel index score also. That will also indicate uh, that the prognosis in the same way as FIM. 
then urinary continence is another major factor which determines the prognosis. If a patient is urinary and bladder continent at the time of admission, in the beginning, there are better chances of his recovery in the later stages. Of cognitive impairment is also a crucial factor. If a patient has cognitive functions intact, if a patient has uh, frontal cortex is not involved, chances of uh, recovery are good because patient will be able to take the commands during the rehabilitation process, that is one of the major factors and because of that, the recovery and the rehabilitation process. Now when we talk about stroke rehabilitation, we cannot proceed further without discussing neuroplasticity first. Now what is neuroplasticity? Neuroplasticity is the capability of brain to reorganize by forming new neural connections throughout the life. That's why when the change in the environment of the brain happens due to hemiplegia or stroke or any of the brain injury, the neuroplasticity is that core principle on which we can base our neuro rehabilitation process and bring out the recovery of the brain. Because the brain is already having an inbuilt mechanism to recover itself. By just leveraging its principles, we can make that process happen faster. That is the secret to a successful neuro rehabilitation program. Now let's discuss about the basic principles of neuroplasticity. The first principle is that body parts compete for the brain representation. More any body part will be used, the bigger will be its representation size in the brain. The opposite also stands true. If a particular part is not used, it happens as learnt no use. So the representation of that segment in the brain reduces. That is what happens when the patient is not using the affected side and later on in the chronic stages that particular segment becomes kind of lost from the brain's map and the patient ends up with having no function on that side. By using a novel approach of CIMT which was given around uh, you know, 20, 30 years back by Dr. Edward Taub, this concept was initiated of learned non-use that if we constrain the normal side and allow the patient to not use the normal side to compensate for the functions, we are basically forcing him to use his affected side. And by forcing him to use his affected side, we are making sure that the brain is improving, increasing the representation of cortical maps of that affected side of the body. Higher neural activation leading to a better recovery. Second principle states that same and contralateral hemisphere can contribute to motor control. That means that if one hemisphere is damaged, the intact hemisphere may take over to some of its functions. To recover, neurons need to be stimulated through activity. The same principle is used in mirror therapy. So when uh, you know we place a mirror in between uh, the patient's affected side and the non-affected side and we ask the patient to move the normal side and we ask the patient to look in the mirror, it, it is basically tricking the brain into thinking that his affected side is also moving similarly because the patient is seeing his image and is believing that it is the opposite side of the body that is the affected side of the body which is also moving normally. So, by sending that stimulus to the brain, we are kind of activating the neurons on that side, improving the plasticity chances and hence the recovery. It is a kind of visual feedback the patient has given so that the patient is made to believe that his affected side has a equal representation in the brain and the brain is sending the impulses on the affected side to initiate that action which he is already seeing happening in the mirror. It is a form of sensory motor learning and in various functional MRI studies it is seen that the brain areas that are involved in these type of learning they are activated by the visual illusion in the form of mirror therapy. We will discuss one more approach today that is Neuro Linguistic Programming. As the name suggests Neuro Linguistic Programming this approach talk about communicating with the brain. It is basically a language of brain that is to understand how the brain functions and how we can use certain set of commands to elicit a proper response from the brain.
to improve the functional outcome, the motor outcome of the patient. Now, NLP is basically a communication of brain in which we use certain factors like how we think, what are the verbal and non-verbal communications used and how we can use such communication to change the patterns and behaviors of if a, a therapist patient. If treating a hemiplegic patient is aware about the concept of NLP, the concept that whatever command you are going to give to your patient has an impact on the recovery of that patient, the therapist is more likely to get out the better response from the patient and using NLP can actually fasten the recovery of the patient. The best part about NLP is that it can be used to treat even the chronic cases. Now you must have heard, you know, there are cases which are 10 years old, 12 years old, more than that also, who had an onset of hemiplegia, of, of stroke and they had taken their share of physiotherapy and rehabilitation for about 6 months, 8 months and then they dropped out. And from that point onwards, they have certain impairments which they have now become very, very friendly with. They have accepted it as a part of their routine, as a part of their body. If they are unable to lift the arm, they have just accepted it that way. We see such patients in our OPD setups all the time. You will get to see them. Now, what if I tell you that even in such <clears throat> chronic cases, your approach, your rehabilitative approach can bring results. It is a major breakthrough. And I'm not only saying to specifically use only NLP. A treatment rehabilitation approach has to include all the uh, approaches I've just discussed. We have to make the rehabilitative plan, including, uh, you know, all the approaches, be it CIMT, mirror therapy, FES, or, you know, even the MRP and other, other stuff. But while giving the commands and coming up with the exercise plan, practically making out exercise plan for the patient, just a single concept of NLP can benefit the patient to, you know, decrease the recovery time, to make them recover faster, be it in acute stage or in a chronic stage. Now I will come about the concepts and the principles of neuro-linguistic programming how it works, what it works and what is the concept behind it. Now we believe that for every single movement, our brain has a set of certain neuronal circuits and these neuronal circuits coexist in multiple variations of spatiotemporal changes and you know, for example, if I have, uh, you know, I know a single movement in which I'm lifting my mobile phone and hearing it. Now, this single movement of picking up any object and placing it to my ear, this object has multiple memory patterns stored in my cortex. Maybe I have lifted the phone sometimes to answer a client, sometimes to answer to my parents, sometimes I have used that particular action in an angry mood, sometimes in a happy mood, sometimes maybe you know my mobile phone was uh, feeling hot, sometimes it was in my pocket and I took it out. Different variations could exist for that single action of using your mobile, putting it to answer a call or to do any activity. Now, similarly, for example, if we take a simple example of, uh, you know, uh, pouring water in the glass, now the same variation in which the action is to pour something into the glass, for the same action, brain has multiple pathways, multiple neuronal circuits in which different different memories are stored for that particular motor function, that particular action. Maybe I have poured lassi from a jug in a glass sometime. Maybe I have poured uh, water from, uh, you know, from a uh, glass bottle which was completely full, heavy. Or maybe, you know, I have uh, sometimes, uh, you know, used uh, is there to just empty the empty thoroughly so the extension uh, the pronation movement was extra because the water was less in that uh, in that jar so variations could be of the angle of the weight of the sensory feedback of the texture of the object and also with different emotions at different times one time i'm very happy doing it one time i'm ignorant doing it one time it is occasion of celebration at times it is an occasion of sad mood times I might be thirsty while doing it. So one action is linked with multiple multiple experiences. This is the core of NLP that 
for every single action, every single movement that you want to elicit in a hemiplegic patient, there exists a memory pattern, there exists a memory map inside our brain. Now what we have to do is, we have to elicit that particular map and by eliciting and constantly sending the neuronal signals to that particular memory map, we can elicit the motor output which is needed to perform that action. It is a very simple concept. Understand it thoroughly. There are only two factors which we need to concentrate while you know starting with this approach in a patient. The first approach is the first uh, the first thing to understand is the command you will give to a patient because it is a linguistic based approach. Whatever language we use, whatever command we give to the patient, that has a lot of impact in making it a successful therapy. Now, command has to be very, very affirmative and positive. For example, it a therapist has to establish a proper rapport. Now, I know out of today's knowledge or out of my understanding, somewhere I read, I, using a proper language can impact the patient's outcome. So now I know about this concept and I'm using it while exercising with my patient. Before today, I was unaware about it. So maybe my mood, my commands, my, you know, uh, the way I was handling the patient was having a particular impact on the patient. But if I'm consciously using my commands to alter those signals now, I become more effective. Now, for example, earlier I was giving a command to the patient, hold the glass of water or is, is repetition go 10 times career? Leke jaiye waha pe, aise kariye. You know, the, these are the instructions I used to give, for example, before I knew about the NLP concept. After I know about the concept, I am aware that my command holds an importance. My command has to be affirmative. And the second concept is that my command has to be such which has been a memory map of the patient. The action I want to elicit is already stored in a patient's brain memory. Something which he had been doing before the stroke multiple times. He had been doing it repeatedly, repeatedly. So if I give a command to the patient to perform a function which he had been doing earlier and doing that function will give me that particular movement which I want to elicit, then I'm successful. Now understand it with an example. Understand it with an example. I want the movement of patient's flexion you know, and his hand above his head. I want this movement. Now, earlier I was telling him, okay, lift your arm, lift your arm, take it up, bring it down. Lift your arm, haath upar leke jaiye, shabash khud se zor lagaiye. This is what he used to say, for ma making the patient do it actively or to involve the patient. Now, after knowing NLP, my approach would be, I will not just ask the patient to raise your arm. The patient has no memory pattern. Nobody has given him a command earlier, raise your arm. Or, Maybe he was doing it, but this raise your arm command is not eliciting anything in terms of the memory map if I'm talking about. Now, if I give him a command, uh, okay, can you uh, comb your hair? Okay, uh, pretend as if you're applying oil to your hair. Now the patient, if you have to apply oil to your hair, if you have to comb your hair, can you feel your hair? Are they silky? Are they, are they you know, what texture are they? Now, Listen, if I'm giving a command to the patient, uh, pretend as if you're applying oil to your hair. Now he'll take his hand to his head and he will try to move the hand. Now, after knowing the NLP, my command is touch your hair. Feel your hair. Now he has touched his hair earlier also. And he knows how to touch his hair. Now he's bringing the hand up to feel his hair, to touch his hair. He is not raising the arm. He is touching his hair. Touching his hair has an impact in his memory pattern. He has been doing this action. He has been combing his hair. Now once he has touched it, add the second input. Feel the texture of your hair. Now you can do a variation to the exercise. Pretend as if you are applying oil to the head. So the patient is moving. The patient will not be able to do maybe functionally the complete action. The therapist has to assist him. But while we are assisting the patient in doing this activity, the patient is actually firing those memory 
maps inside his brain and we are eliciting the neuronal circuitry we are, we are trying to get the response from this particular concept that this action has been repeated multiple times in the past so no matter what is the injury no matter how much of uh, damage has done because of ischemic hemorrhage or you know ischemia or hemorrhage in the brain there are some circuits which are still uh, existing there are some collateral connections because of the various spatial temporal um, movements he had learned in the past they are existing in the cortex they are existing in the head so if we are doing this movement those particular uh, neuronal circuits are being stimulated they are being called to activation and they will give a parallel stimulation to the motor muscles so here we are not using the periphery to elicit a cortical uh, signal here we are using the reverse pattern we are eliciting the cortical signals to elicit a peripheral movement pehle hum kya karte the earlier what we used to do we used to move the hand to stimulate the brain now we are stimulating the brain by just eliciting into the diving into the memory patterns and using those memory patterns we are trying to elicit the action which we are doing now maybe i am repeating this action 20 times i am repeating it consecutively in every session and then slowly and slowly the patient becomes familiar with this action the patient relearns the same action it is easy for him it is faster learning for him because he is learning and we are using a component of learning which was already existing in his mind we are tapping into that potential we are using those memory stores of the brain to bring out that motor output to us that is the concept of nlp that is why it helps you recover your patients faster always use your commands for every exercise in such a way that it elicits the function which the patient has been doing earlier and earlier now for example if a patient has been driving scooter so to elicit the wrist extension i can give a command exam for example pretend you giving raise to your scooter you accelerating your scooter so this is how you accelerate the scooter and this is the action the person will do the, the, the therapist can assist the patient while doing it but when the patient is imagining that he accelerating the scooter actually the same movement is happening which i am desiring in the patient and the patient when thinking about it will take out his memory patterns and the same motor output will be generated in the body in subsequent subsequent sections there is one more thing uh, which we talk about in nlp is anchoring we know that the patient has emotional anchors to certain behaviors while assessing the patient before starting a rehabilitation we all do assessment so while assessing the patient try to find out which actions or which outcomes are more important to the patient we want to achieve a function fine but what is patient expecting from us what is the function which patient wants to recover fastest so if we fix our goal on that we will be able to achieve those goals faster because the patient's participation to achieve that goal will be higher which he wants to achieve as compared to trying to participate in a goal which the therapist sets for him without consulting him or without taking his desires into uh, action now for example there could be deviations in the desires of a therapist and a patient how a patient may feel that i want to you know just stand up and go to the washroom independently and for a therapist maybe you know trying to uh, introduce his grip is more important the therapist is maybe functioning on or focusing on making him independent in using uh, the spoon or maybe you know making him independent in having food or drinking water but for patient the prime goal which he wants to achieve is to be independent in standing and going to the washroom by himself so always make sure that while you are making goals your your uh, uh, you know expectations and the patient's expectations are in sync with each other Thank you.